Hi guys, Jen Maher here with my little helper, Skittle. Um, just wanted to talk to you a little bit about that LCD spreadsheet that you've either already downloaded or you're about to download. Um, so if you've already downloaded it, you're probably looking at it like, wait, what is this? This doesn't look like a revolutionary um, you know, document or anything, and it's not. It's not about the document. The document actually, um, with most of my clients, doesn't even exist. Usually I just take a piece of paper and fold it into thirds. So it's not the document itself, it's kind of the practice and theory behind it. So LCD stands for least common denominator. And this whole concept came to me from B and I. Um, it's a networking group that I used to belong to and kind of need to tell you a little bit about that because I think it sets the stage for what we use it for now. So B and I is a, um, an in, sorry, <laughs> an international networking group that you belong to, that I belong to. Um, and actually, by the way, you should look for local chapters if you haven't already, if you do local business because they're fantastic. But the whole concept is that you have lunch with the same group of people or dinner, happy hour, whatever, um, weekly, and you get to build these relationships and you're all kind of doing the you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back thing where you're helping one another, in one another market. And part of the concept is that every time that you meet, you stand up and you give like a one minute commercial about your business. Well, when you think about it, it's you're kind of saying the same thing to the same people over and over and over again. And I hadn't really realized that until like our regional director or whatever his uh, title was, he did an informal training that was free. And basically what he talked about was you're wasting your time if you're saying the same thing to the same people over and over and over again. And to really get value out of that group, you need to dive a lot deeper. So he introduced the concept of LCD, least common denominators. And it's basically the exact opposite of your elevator pitch. So everyone that is has been in business school or that um, has started a new business, you've probably gotten the advice that you need to have an elevator pitch. An elevator pitch is like really, really fine tuning and getting super honed in on what your business is so that when you're in an elevator with someone, you have a 30 to 60 second window where you could actually tell someone it doesn't have to be in an elevator but that's just the concept when you meet someone you can very quickly identify and tell them exactly what you do who you help um, it's just a way to kind of really fine-tune and hone in on your business and there's a ton of value in that but he was suggesting that we do the opposite dive into our business and instead of making it this really compact piece make like basically kind of brainstorm and get the entire broad picture that way you have these little teeny tiny least common denominator pieces that you can then introduce to people. So rather than me standing up and saying, hi, I'm Jen Maher, Squarespace expert. This week I'd love to build a website. Instead, I could tell the group this week, I really wanna work with someone in the pet industry. So I'd love to work with someone that's a dog walker or that uh, is a veterinarian or has a dog grooming shop. Well, what that does is the rest of the people in my group were then able to stop and think it triggers something else and so they could might say like oh my neighbor is a veterinarian or oh i go to this dog groomer and their website's horrible De jen should definitely reach out to them so it kind of helps trigger that in the networking sense and it was fantastic for that purpose really helped tremendously when i started applying it to social media marketing with my clients it actually it kind of took on a little bit of a different um, role but it it's still like it fits so perfectly and it really, really helped with not just creating a social media marketing plan, but also with um, SEO and voice search optimization on the back end of the websites. So basically the concept is you brainstorm and that's what these sheets are about. So it's brainstorming and then kind of diving in deeper. I'll use myself as an example. So yes, I'm a website designer. Who do I help? I help people that want to learn how to build websites and create a design business. I also help people that are um, that are building their website for their own industry or their own business. Um, I, what do I do? I build websites. I train people how to build websites. I host small group classes. I help people troubleshoot. So I've got kind of the who and what, but it's very general. So instead, when I look at my who, instead of just having I help people that want to build websites or I help people that um, are trying to build their own website for the business, instead, I will take these who's and I will break it down really, really deep dive. And actually, when I do mine, um, this page would never, ever be enough. I actually went, I mean, I went on and on and on forever because I really, really wanted to kind of minutely figure out all of the people. So for instance, in terms of people that wanted to become website designers, it might be a woman that is recently divorced that has never worked before in her life, but now finds the need to work, but she can't be out at a nine to five job every day and she needs something that's a little bit more flexible. So that might be a target person that I reach for. It might be someone who has been in corporate world their entire life and now has decided that they want the freedom and uh, like wants to be their own boss so that they can start getting into semi-retirement. When I look at the who is designing a business, it might be that this is an artist that has been doing like local art for a long time but now wants to sell nationally. It might be a local fitness center or gym that wants to start incorporating some fitness and nutrition courses. Like you 
really, really fine tune and get my who into like all of these little tiny nuggets. So you might have tons and tons and tons of them, or you might only have three or four. The what's, you do the exact same thing with the what's. So I don't just build websites. I don't just do training. I actually build this spe like specific type of website. I build this specific type of website. I help people troubleshoot with their um, you know structure or their design. I You break it down into every single teeny tiny piece that you do for the what. And then you will probably notice that there is also a page called what else. So the what else is also really important. The what else is all, there are all of those other things that you have that you hold, that you either offer value or that you like really hold true to yourself that will make you authentic and make you you and make you memorable and make people relate to you. So the what else's for me are things like the fact that I am in Nebraska, but I'm also in Mexico, the Baja in Mexico. So those are things that are personal about me that maybe um, some people might resonate with or it helps people remember me a little bit better. This one, Skittle, actually is very, she's part of my what else because she's just with me all the time. And if you're a dog lover, you know, how that is and so that helps people kind of understand like my relationship with her makes me more personable makes me um, you know definitely like resonate more with other dog lovers I guess so you think about all of those different things like I'm a music lover anything at all that either offers value or that makes you who you are are going to be parts of the pieces that you can either incorporate into SEO and voice search um, or, but definitely you want to think about for social media because you want to be presenting your true authentic self in social media. And some of those pieces can really fit in well. So the idea is that you do all of these brainstorming exercises and then you start thinking in terms of like how to fine tune it a little bit better. So I've got maybe 80 targets that I've, I'm thinking of. I look at those and now I can start thinking, who do I really like, who am I really passionate about working with? Who do I really want to target and focus on? Like, where is, where, what's going to be my ideal day, my ideal client? Um, what projects am I going to be working on in my, what I do and what person am I going to be helping? And then you start kind of making those your first pieces of your plan and the first pieces of your, not just social media marketing plan, but also your SEO. So that's why these sections that say like the, the search terms or the post ideas, you start thinking about if, for instance, I am thinking of the um, woman that is like an empty nester that wants to learn how to do website design, I might use her as like my first target example and I might start thinking of what types of things might she, she, she be searching for. So maybe she's searching for things like what can I do after my child goes to college or um, stay at home job opportunities for women or things like that that I could potentially add into my SEO and into my voice search optimization. But then I also have my post ideas so I can start thinking for that particular client or target, maybe I want to post some quotes about empty nesters. Maybe I want to curate and post some other people's links about like how to turn your child's bedroom into a home office after they go to um, college. Like maybe it's um, different like little positive uh, quotes and messages or images, like definitely imagery and songs can, can definitely evoke that kind of emotional response. But you start thinking about all of the different post ideas that you could possibly use to reach that target. Um, or if you're talking about your what else or your what you do, then you start thinking about post ideas that you could um, share little bits of information or tips and tricks or things like that. So it really kind of helps you to get all of that set up and then you're ready to take the next step. So obviously with SEO and voice search optimization, you just start kind of incorporating those pieces, the phrases into the back end of your website. But with social media marketing, you're going to be thinking in terms of themes. So when you think about social media in general, obviously they're there to addict us. They want us to be coming back over and over and over again. So the entire idea is that they use the algorithm to show us more of the content that we like. So if I am thinking in terms of my target and I'm thinking about what would that target stop and look at? If I'm posting something, what would get them? What would reach them? If I do that once and I make a great post about it, one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is they make a post and it's a great post, but then they go off and like immediately start posting about something completely different. Um, and then they're kind of all over the place. It's so much better when you have a plan that takes advantage of the algorithm and actually keeps these themes going for a week or so. So the idea would be, for instance, if I was reaching that empty nester client, I put maybe a quote out about, um, you know, how hard it is to see your babies grow up or something like that. Well, if that person gets reached either on my Instagram or my Facebook, 
um, Meta is gonna pay attention, the algorithm's gonna pay attention and be like, ooh, that person paused and read Jen's post. Let's see if it's a fluke or let's see if we're on to something and they're gonna show her my future post to see. And if it's not reaching them because now all of a sudden I'm talking about basketball or something, then they're going to end up and go, like they're gonna show them somebody else's posts that are going to continue to reach them over and over and over again. So we addict them, right? So basically, if I show one post that's a really nice quote, and then like maybe the next day, I show another piece that's like how to change your child's bedroom to make it a home office. We follow that 80-20 rule, which is only 20% of the time are we directly selling, but if we kind of reach them once, and then we, they see another post of ours, because Meta's gonna try to show them another piece of content to see if they're onto something, and if they can get them kind of regularly looking and checking your content, then, if I show them something that kind of also resonates with them, then it's again gonna reach them. If maybe the third post also keeps them in, now they're hooked and now Meta is basically gonna be showing them my content over and over and over again because they feel like it's something that's resonating with this person and it's keeping them on the platform longer. So it really makes sense. Um, after you've kind of done a few of those like 80% posts, then you can start doing things like, hey, did you know that you can, like being a Squarespace designer is a really, really great thing that you can learn on your own. There's a lot of videos out there. You can book a session with me and I'd be more than happy to kind of walk you through how to start your own business and how to start learning more about Squarespace. So then you kind of start getting into those like salesy pieces. What happens when you are doing these spreadsheets and you have like a whole list of the different targets and your what else pieces, um, your what you do pieces, you can end up creating like an entire year's of con worth of content so quickly when you think about that, putting it into a week at a time and keeping it like taking advantage of those themes. It's really kind of shocking how quickly when I've done this with clients, how quickly they pick it up and they're like, oh, actually social media is a lot easier than I thought it was because when you're staying on with a theme, it makes it a lot easier for you to, um, to stay on track because you know that you're gonna be kind of in this rhythm now and now you've already got it all spelled out and you know who your next target's gonna be and then the next one. And obviously if there are people that you enjoy working with or tasks that you enjoy doing, then you'll kind of revisit those anyway. You're gonna find new ways to um, make different posts and kind of focus on a whole different aspect of that target for a week or two. So that's basically how you use this whole S LCD system to run the social media. We did not talk a lot about the what else, but the what else is very valuable. Definitely it helps to people to see who you are, but also I think a lot of people miss this when they're thinking of SEO or when they're um, thinking of their, their social media posts. Obviously with a social media post, it's a no brainer. If I'm posting things about Skittle or um, you know my life in general, it makes me a little bit more personal. It makes people feel like they know me better. Um, so I highly recommend, even though it's scary and most people don't like to do it, definitely try to bring some of your personal life into the social media. But a lot of people neglect doing that on the SEO side of things too. So if I'm doing things in my social media and I'm talking about my life in the Baja or my dog Skittle or whatever, um, or, and even if I'm doing like local work and I'm out meeting a bunch of people or I'm at an event or something, imagine, I imagine that there are probably times where someone does not remember my name, but they might remember that, oh, what's that blonde girl that has the fluffy white dog that lives in Nebraska or that what's that Squarespace designer that spends her time in the Baja and also in Nebraska. If I incorporate some of those pieces into my backend SEO or into like definitely into my voice search optimization, which is a whole nother page, we use a really unique system to create just a jam pack voice search optimization and it's really cool. So um, book a mini session if you wanna learn more about that. Or I think I have small group rabbit hole classes about that as well, so take a peek. Um, but basically you can take all of those pieces and say, so I have that in my site, like what's what's the name of the blonde girl that has the little fluffy white dog named Skittle? Um, because those are things that are probably, I can imagine someone definitely searching for that. If they have met me somewhere and they don't remember my name, that would be what I would search. So think in terms of that, like the things that make you who you are, if you're talking about it on social media, then you can definitely include that in your voice search optimization and your SEO. But also, that should be part of your 80% of your posting that people are being able to identify with you and, and resonate with you and you're an authentic, genuine human being. Um, your people will love it. So don't be afraid of if you're a sarcastic person or you're silly or you're not super professional or you are really professional, no matter what it is, be who you are and your people will resonate with you. There's plenty of business to go around no matter what industry you're in. Just be who you are, really deep dive, use these sheets to deep dive into who you are, who you wanna help, 
what you do and then pull that into your SEO voice search and your social media and you have nowhere to go but up. So hope this helps. Um, definitely feel free to book a mini session or a full expert session if you want. Obviously I use myself as an example for this. Your industry might be a little bit more confusing or it might be a little bit harder for you to get into that deep dive position. So I'd be happy to help you. Um, you can use, uh, you can book with me and use the coupon code CLIENT50, all caps, no spaces, C-L-I-E-N-T, five zero. Um, you can get 50% off a coaching call and then it could be a coaching call or you could just do a mini session. A mini session is probably plenty of time to start the deep dive um, and then if we need more time we can always always do that so thank you guys so much for listening um, let me know if you have any questions and good luck to you it's gonna be fun